In 2011, an American furry was possessed by an entity and forced to write one of the most infamous creepypastas of all time. The resulting internet urban legend, Sonic.exe, was so full of grammatical errors, plot holes, and hyperrealistic blood that it instantly became a horror icon, only to be banned shortly after it was posted. So why, among all the Slenderman and suicidal Squidwards, does Sonic.exe have such a cult following? Why are we unironically obsessed Obsessed with dark, edgy versions of our favorite characters, and whatever happened to the furry c diddler who created this entire thing? This is a crash course in Sonic EXE. This is bad art history. It all begins, as many of these things do, with a furry who likes kids. But in case you've never heard of this before, Sonic EXE is the name of a notoriously terrible creepypasta, short internet horror fiction, about a haunted copy of the original 1991 Sonic game, in which Sonic bites off Tails' head, makes blood come out of his own eyes, and calls himself God. Pretty heavy stuff. But with every rise comes a fall. And just as Sonic EXE was achieving mass internet fame, admins on the site where it was originally posted took the story down without any warning, prompting the author to have such a legendary meltdown that attention would soon turn to his other online activities. But before we can dive into any of that, you probably have a few questions. What was this story actually about? Why did it get banned only after it attained such a huge fan base? The reason? is objectively really funny, but it's hard to explain anything further without reading the pasta. And for the next few minutes, I'll spare you my obnoxious accent and let you surf this wave yourself. A wavy web surf, if you will. To catch you up to speed, one summer day, our protagonist, Tom, pauses his epic gamer sesh of Sonic Unleashed to check the mailbox. Inside, he finds a CD port of the classic 1991 Sonic game. Alongside it is an ominous note written by his boy Kyle, whom Tom hadn't seen in several weeks. I can't take it anymore. I had to get rid of this thing somehow before it was too late. He's after me. Please, Tom, destroy this godforsaken disc before he comes after you too. I went up to my room and put the disc in. When the title screen popped up, I noticed that it was the first Sonic game. I was like, awesome. The first thing I noticed that was out of place was when I pressed start, there was a split second when I saw the title image turned into something much different. Something that I now consider horrifying. The sky had darkened. The title emblem was rusted and ruined. The Sega 1991 was now instead Sega 666. And the water had turned red like blood before cutting to black. But Sonic? His eyes were pitch black and bleeding with two glowing red dots staring right at me. And the music was that creepy caverns of winter music from Earthbound. And his smile had stretched wider up to the edge of his face. I figured that it was just a glitch and forgot about it. And then another weird thing happened. I picked file one and chose Tails. The game froze for about five seconds and I heard a creepy pixelated laugh. Tom, a seasoned and intrepid gamer, continues playing the game, but everything is ever so slightly off. And as Tails progresses through Hill Zone 1, he notices that the ground is littered with the mutilated corpses of his animal companions. But then, finally, a familiar face. Tails notices Sonic way off in the distance. Suddenly, I began to have a growing feel of dread as Tails walked closer to Sonic to get his attention. I heard a faint static growing louder as Tails was but inches away from Sonic and stopped and stuck his hands out to touch him. Suddenly, in a split second, I saw Sonic's eyes open and they were black with those red glowing dots. Just like the title image, the screen turned black. I was taken to a different level with the level title now saying Hide and Seek. Tails looked as though he was scared out of his wits this time, making frantic gestures to me as if he wanted to get out of the area he was in as fast as possible. But then Sonic appeared right in front of Tails, and Tails looked up in horror. Blood started to come down those blackened eyes of Sonic's as a grin slowly grew from his face. I was so shocked by what had happened. Did Sonic murder Tails? No, he couldn't have. 
He and Tails were supposed to be best friends, right? Why did Sonic do that to him? The red static lasted for about 15 seconds, and then it showed me a most unpleasant image. The image showed an image of Sonic standing in the darkness where you can only see his face. He looked so real, you could actually see the lines in his blue fur. His face, oh God, he had the most horrifying smile I'd ever seen. There was text, I am God. I heard a voice right behind me, like a whisper. Try to keep this interesting for me, Tom. I turned around to see where the voice was coming from and what I saw made me scream. Sitting on my bed, staring right at me, was a Sonic plushie, smiling with bloodstains under its eyes. Powerful stuff. Now, assuming this is the first time you've ever fully read Sonic EXE, it may be a lot to process. But processing power isn't much of an issue for this channel, because today's video was made possible by the one, the only, Meta PCs. Meta PCs is a PC company specializing in award-winning custom builds for any budget or lifestyle. Whether you're a gamer, a content creator, or just a professional YouTube watcher, these guys have you covered. Meta PCs let you fully customize your machine inside and out with their custom configurator, and their huge array of powerful graphics cards, RGB lights, CPUs, cases, and peripherals. For instance, I designed this Gangster Bob PC myself, picked out their amazing RTX 47 super graphics card and this beefy Intel Core i7 CPU, and they put the whole thing together for me in this beautiful Fantex case. And if the fully customized builds are overwhelming for you, not to worry, because Meta PCs also offers tons of ready-to-ship builds that go out the next business day. And right now, you can use my code SCUM at checkout to get a sweet discount. Thank you so much to Meta PCs for sponsoring this video, and back to the show. So how exactly did something like this blow up? Let's do a quick timeline. 2011. On August 9th, user JC the Hyena, digital artist and self-professed prince of everlasting darkness, takes inspiration from this edited screenshot and uploads a scary story to the Creepypasta wiki. And like all wiki sites, it's operated by a team of admins who can delete any submission they want at any time for any reason, which would become a huge problem for JC. But for the time being, Sonic EXE immediately picked up steam, with commenters simultaneously praising it for being pants-shittingly scary and also accusing it of plagiarizing much more famous works. But to the fans, this mattered very little. And on August 13th, 2012, the release of the Sonic EXE fan game changed everything. Everyone who was anyone was covering this game. PewDiePie, Markiplier, this guy from Brazil. And while its detractors claim that the story was unoriginal, poorly written, and unintentionally hilarious, the fact that you could play it for yourself put it leagues ahead of the competition. But I truly believe Sonic EXE popped off for a much simpler reason. Sonic fans are insane. Between Sonic's deeply unfortunate history of fan creations, a series of games of extremely varied quality, and the bizarre tendency of Sonic fans to create extensive lore, it was just right place, right time. And the early 2010s was huge for internet horror. Slenderman, Jeff the Killer, Smile Dog, Man Door, Hand Hook, Car Door, and Sonic EXE remain hugely influential on today's internet landscape. Think about how much popular online fiction over the last 10 years has been horror-oriented. The Backrooms, SCPs, Analog Horror, Mascot Horror, ARGs, many such cases. But the accusations of plagiarism are pretty troubling, which begs the question, if JC the Hyena didn't come up with these ideas, then who did? Edgy Sonic reimaginings have actually been around for as long as Sonic has. Back in 1993, the developers of Sonic CD stuck this spooky Sonic into the sound test menu, scaring the crap rather unintentionally and of anyone who might find it. In the 2000s, DeviantArt was overrun with emo edgy Sonic OCs. In fact, I challenge you to type in your first name, the hedgehog, into Google Images and try not to cut yourself on the edge. And notoriously, in 2005, Sega released the edgiest game ever designed. Shadow the Hedgehog, in which Shadow, Sonic's dark, brooding counterpart with highlights, balances the fate of humanity while riding a cool motorcycle and shooting a gun. 
this is a game about an animal that wears shoes. But to give credit where it's due, JC did come up with one original idea. As he wrote in a Fur Affinity Journal entry in October 2012, what is Sonic EXE? Many of you fans speculated that he was God, Satan, or a really powerful demon from hell, and all your interpretations of my creation have amused and entertained me. He's an entirely different entity, one that created itself. See, the creature that is Sonic EXE was created in the void, in a gab between dimensions. He learned about Sonic the Hedgehog, and was right there and then a big fan of the series, and especially its character, Sonic. He mainly goes after video gamers and Sonic fans, but he has a certain hunger for the kind of video gamers who talk smack about Sonic. He wanted his own world to rule so his slaves would have a place to be so he could enslave them. He hopes that one day, the doorway between his world and ours will break open, and all of his dark powers will pour out into our world. Maybe someday, he'll get that chance. Demon emoji. So basically, Sonic EXE is original in that it's the first Sonic OC that is explicitly pro-slavery. Without the cheesiness of the early 2010s, it's very unlikely that we'd be precisely here today. And speaking of cheese, I alluded to the fact that Sonic EXE was banned, even though it is clearly very easy to find right now. And the reason I dragged this out is because it what is one of the funniest things I have ever heard in my life. Sonic EXE was considered to be so poorly written by the admins of the Creepypasta Wiki that less than two years after its publication, they simply would not abide this thing on their website. And if you've ever read like a regular creepypasta that didn't get popular, you probably know that the average writing quality is like stroke inducingly bad. So it's no surprise that upon learning what had happened to his creation, JC lost his mind. And now that we finished discussing Sonic EXE's rise, it's time to discuss the fall. Fur Affinity, the furry art sharing website. On January 14th of 2014, JC took to Fur Affinity and wrote a scathing journal entry accusing the creepypasta admins of bull friggin' horseshit. As he put it, the admins of the Creepypasta wiki have finally decided to delete Sonic EXE off of the wiki, on the grounds that it was, quote, badly written and, quote, had too many cliches and, quote, was a bad example of what should be a creepypasta. But to be clear, a revised version is still up on the site, and the full version has been reposted basically everywhere else. And after 2014, Sonic EXE experienced a decline in popularity, until two huge gamer moments completely turned things around. The first was the Sonic renaissance brought on by the release of Sonic Mania, the 2020 live-action Sonic film with the terrifying CGI, and the age-old curse of liking something ironically for so long it becomes unironic. And the second was Friday Night Funkin'. Released via Newgrounds in October of 2020, this rap battle rhythm game met instant commercial success and maintains an active fan community, even today. One of the biggest factors in its success was fan-made mods. So when the Versus Sonic EXE mod dropped in August of the following year, a new generation of young gamers who were probably in grade school during the pasta's origin were exposed to this legendary meme for the first time. And like fans of old, these kids immediately got to work, making their own edgy OCs, alternate universes, and lore. But by the time Sonic EXE experienced its second wind, JC had been completely cut out of his creation. Because ironically, this guy was way scarier than anything he tried to write. JC the Hyena, active on Fur Affinity since 2010, is a digital artist with a love for Sonic the Hedgehog, macro fetish art, and erotic Discord roleplay. And in July of 2021, right before the Friday Night Funkin' mod would put JC's creation back on the map, Twitter artist Broken Dollmaker posted screenshots of JC engaging in very inappropriate conduct with a 14-year-old who he knew to be 14 over Discord. He was 26 at this time. And the following month, user Shay took ownership of the Sonic EXE story from JC and his then-girlfriend, who voluntarily outed herself, too, as a file. Okay, fellas, fellas. So, what's left? 
Shay continues to helm the Sonic EXE project and maintains no connections to the original creator. Sonic EXE continues to amass new fan projects, ironic and sincere to this day. In fact, the Sonic the Freecog meme going around right now actually uses a design from one of the fan characters. And as for JC, his behavior is irredeemable and his cancellation deserved. But he did leave a parting note before vanishing entirely in the form of a confession and a plea for other victims generally to come forward. And in a true case of separating the art from the artist, Sonic EXE lives on in the hearts and minds of millions, one of the silliest and most legendary pastas to stand the test of time. And though its legacy is spotty, there's no slowing this meme down. Because like Sonic always says, gotta go fast. This is the worst one. I spent 45 minutes trying to come up with a pun for this video and I could not do it. I am so sorry. This has been Bad Art History. This video was made possible by scum cells like you. Thank you. Huge shout out to the Scum Brotherhood, Fat Pug, Freppy, Green Goat, Jason Meyer, Kale, Kitty as Fleas, Kyle, Matt Voltron, Maxi, Perry, Rob Knob, Rotten Pie, Rottweiler, Scoo, Sloth in 3D, and Trevor Savage. And to Scum Babies, Acidic, Alice, Alexander First, Angel Perez, Calzada, Apoptosis Necrosis, Aribo, Baker, Burgess Capra, Callie D, Cara, Catherine Mary, Claudia Della Malva, Compucian, Corneas Corn, Deriding Polyphemus, Donkey Ching, Ivaya, Ezra Lara, Fennec Arson, Feza570, Globity Wob, Huds, Insane Freak, Jack Ramirez, Jake McGuckin, James Corden, Jasper, Joshua DA, Katarina Marcott, K Huck, Colbert Berg, Kraken Jokes, Chris, Max J, McBallin, Mancino Rocker, Pyro Pizza Wizard, Raymundo2112, Red Blaze27, Ruben Manchester, Rasha13, Sethington Sheeb, Soda Amazing, Splendid Cow Hoof, Super Mario Nutsack. Let's go. This is the best username on the whole website. Tommy B, Tyler H, Unclear Rain, and Young Stroker, the Body Snatcher.